Okay, my friends, we're going to talk about the novel exercise today of the first part of it. This is going to be a three part series. We're going to be part one today. It says in the Church of Missouri. The study of church history can be difficult. For example, how many times did it take anybody to get the plates? What about Aaron and the Sin of Isaiah? Think about how, how difficult the time that they had. They had to defer the kingdom. They had to, to go out amongst the people who were both thirsty. What about Zionsky and Wadi Jeskiani? The God's principle is simple. Heavenly Father allows promise just like he asked him a complete moral experience and unabated agency. We also receive revelation just like we do, line upon line. As seers, they are allowed to see them, but the enemy of our off, they are not being near the street. So as we watch the return of the prophets, we're going to see them down in very tough, very tough places. Because they push through and receive revelation, they're able to be successful in the end. Is this recorded or do I read it itself? That whole thing was. Yeah. yeah. So, where are we going? You go back and. I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure. Okay, okay. go ahead and play. Go ahead and play it. We'll see what we got. Let's we'll slow down here. How about if I just do it? At this point. Yeah, we can do it, yeah. yeah. When the saints crossed through Syria or Iowa, it would be a new quest for a home where they could build the kingdom of God without oppression. The way to this new refuge was not easy, as it entailed sacrifice and death. And the first day of the journey, the church of Christ Iowa Church proved to be the hardest. We can't wait until 131 days to cover the 200 miles they traveled across Iowa. Find your company a year later took only 100 days to cover 1,050 miles from one of the Great Salt Lake Valley. Inadequate preparation, lack of knowledgeable guides, and delays, visible weather, and difficult terrain made the Iowa journey one of the most trained in the history of the church. Nevertheless, these hardy folks knew some of the stories fell. The Iowa journey simply hardened their resolve to provide a valuable experience for the future. Here we see the, the Iowa track from from Nagu to Winter Quarters. They pretty much stay in the southern part of Iowa, but it becomes is rainy and muddy and very difficult for them to go. A quick guide of Nagu was doing from the beginning. There was an unfinished church that required key leaders to do the next coming to the lead, lead to return to Nagu after Nagu already got time and time again. A silly and tear of people in front of various wagons in some of churches was no small task. Invariably, arguments arose regarding who should be included in the event, in the events company. And then they had frozen and broken equipment. It was terrible. Three things caused very intense frustration and either contributed to or exacerbated the failed attempt to reach the remains of the summer of 1846. Ten of the in the fall. The original plan was to get to Nabu, leave Nabu, and get to Salt Lake by 1846. Of course, we know they didn't get to 1847. Why? This is being a scared saint who was never the plan for the saints to all leave Nagu at the same time. Just the events of was to leave. In February 1846, only the lead part of those who were prepared. When the saints told about 10 of the 215,000, so they were set out, they panicked and followed behind them, not wanting to be the time without the apostles, but not being ready to go either. This premature exodus of the saints was terrible with adequate provisions. And so the, the, the events company that had provisions, had to share the provisions with those who didn't have them, and they ran out. No one could have foreseen or adequately planned for the rain. It rained relentlessly from the one that they have Creek, which is on the far side of Iowa, with Creek servers flowing 10 to 40 feet above the banks, leaving the entire country to have a little run hill from Nauvoo to Council Bluffs. Finally, James J. Strang, an apostate, used the plan of the safety of his followers and others. The judges of God are following those who have failed to follow him. 
Glitch Quest season two tours of Pellets Brazilian that those who are doing Brigham Young were due to out of construction. J.J. Stern was a nobody who produced a forged document from Joseph Smith, quote, unquote, from Joseph Smith, saying he was the leader, and 5,000 people left to follow him instead of Brigham Young. Regardless of the reasons, the 1846 plan failed miserably, and Brigham Young went to the same Japanese and failed to follow the council, staying on until they were actually prepared to embark on the journey west. Now, we can empathize with these people because they saw the prophets leave, and they, um, uh, they wanted to go too. <laughs> it, it makes sense. Um, Brigham Young said very tersely, he remarked that the president was scared that the Elbert Saints were working in concert with the devil and his angels and ready to run for reasons and as they planned. That's a very, very tough accusation, but he made it. He had their opinion against counsel. Now I can I empathize them because they wanted to be the leaders, but they weren't ready to go. Nevertheless, do you know where they do it was an act of faith for the saints? They were part of that knowing exactly where they were going, or they were at a place to sell. No one had seen the Rocky Mountains, no one had been there before. They, act, they literally do not know where they are going. The only thing that the leaders received a relation to relocate to a refugee somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, the only thing that followed the leaders there. All these things combined to create a tenuous situation for the saints. They didn't ask to depart, and on their journey to March 1st, because it took so long to gather them all together on the other side of the river. Rain, early snow thaws, followed by gale winds and plenty to measure just created heavy for the saints. Spring like weather was still taken under departure by ferry water between the river and across the Mississippi. The weather was too deep for the wagons, so a later freeze led the very few saints across the river created heavy for those already in Iowa. There's um, there's a myth caused by the picture that I show you that the saints crossed over on the ice, but in reality they did not. From the Journal of Our History it says, quote, we read this please? We read this please? Yeah. Thanks. These misunderstandings are wide ranging. The first error is the notion that almost all of the Nauvoo area saints exited for the West in February 1846 with the Brigham Young Company, while a minority stayed behind to finish the Nauvoo Temple. A second mistake regards that most, if not all, of those saints who departed in February 1846 crossed on a frozen Mississippi River. A third conclusion posts that, it, that God provided the ice bridge to help his people escape life-threatening mobbings. Another myth is that nine babies were born the first night of the winter exodus. Records kept during 1846 do not support these four perceptions. They show that Brigham Young's February group was only an advanced company of 2,500 people or fewer, while the heart of the exodus involving 12,000 or more people took place on schedule in the spring. Also, the February exodus started when weather was mild and almost everyone in Young's advance company ferried across the river on quite a flotilla of boats. They encamped between February 4th and the 22nd at Sugar Creek and were ready to start west when the ice sheet formed for barely five days. Relatively few joined Young's company by crossing on the ice. How many crossed on ice in order to join the exodus? Young's company at Sugar Creek was organized and ready to go before the ice formed. There are only just a few cases of latecomers actually starting their westward journey by crossing on the ice. The number might have been two or three hundred people at best. The weather history proves that the ice did not form until February 24th through the 25th. Why is it then that a body of LDS life writings, biographies, and histories written during the rest of that century and into the next assert that their subjects crossed on ice on dates before the ice existed? These include accounts written by participants, their offspring, church general authorities, and leading LDS historians. 
Andrew Jansen, B.H. Roberts, Joseph Fielding Smith, and Leonard J. Arrington, prominent LDS church historians, are guilty of perpetrating the error. I mentioned Jensen's Latter-day Saint but, biography. It's strange. Historians who avoided the error include John Henry Evans, E. Cecil McGavin, and Preston Nibley. William E. Barrett's seminary text, The Restored Church, gives the Ice Bridge date as February 25th, and in a footnote says the date corrects the view that the Mississippi River in 1846 was frozen over before February 25th. Now, the reason that I mention this is because it's important when you study history to get the facts straight. This is an example of, of a story that's based on a picture who was drawn by a man who wasn't there. Many, including Ringling and Little Richard, became very ill on their trip across Iowa. Many children were prepared for the harsh conditions and suffered from exposure. Lack of planning and preparation led to food, tin, and clothing shortages. It was a disaster. Three laws made this most difficult part of the journey for the Saints to head west. Number one, <clears throat> lack of adequate food supplies required many of the men to stop a long way and find work. The apostles were only halfway across the island before they, they, their generosity led to depletion of their supplies. Number two, before this being in time, disorganization led to bringing into our residue with the three coins of 100. Much time was wasted on laws because of lack of organization and communication. We see George Miller was eventually apostatized and left. The worst problem was the weather. It rained for an arranger snowed with fierce winds more than half the days of February, March, and April. Teams could not even go downhill down by so deep. Laws of 10 states and death were great problems. During the rain, they travel less than one half mile per day. Less than a half mile per day. That's, a, that's very short, my friends. Train guys are going to the latter part of the airball in May. Sorry, I was needed for the train. Despite these challenges, very young know that the cities are patient and endure all their privations without murmuring. A month later, he added, quote, I do not think that I have ever been a body of people since the days of the end. Presented the same unpleasant circumstances as these people have been. But there are still growing and I'm obsessed with those who the majority of the camp as well. As was ancient Israel, well, there were companies of captains of hundreds, fifties, and tens. In the next two years, more Old Testament perils were already as being illustrated by churches such as Zion, Utah's the Mountains, Chosen People, Exodus, Mount Pisgah, Turner, Dead Sea, making the desert mother as a rose and a modern Moses in the presence of the of Brigham Young. It was a locust creek the William Clayton person Sarah Joshua was to him. Come, come, he says, when he heard the news of his poor pro wife, son who having had, had given birth to a healthy son. This son was given in for the Latter-day Saints as they crossed the plains over the next decades. Also, locust creek the brother apparently decided to avoid stations and reach by her sons to suffer supplies. Garden growing on Mount Piscor, so several thousand acres of land plowed and planted, we are very secure for the crops. The amazing thing about the trip west was, as the saints started to go through Iowa and hit the mud and the rain and the snow, they didn't give up, they just kept going. By the time they get to, to uh, winter quarters, they're strewn all across the entire state of Iowa, and only about 3,000 people actually make it to the garden row that winter. Uh, I'm sorry, to uh, winter quarters that winter. The rest of them are strewn across the state of Iowa, trying to make their way through. But these saints, as difficult as the journey was, just kept going. What's a miracle to me is not that they made it to Utah, it was, it was that they just kept going despite the awful, awful weather patterns. That spring, workers raced to finish the temple with horse political education on May 1st. So as the saints are crossing Iowa through the months of February, May, and March, and April, the few are still stay behind to face the temple and be dedicated in May. They still have a on the baptismal fund. To the decorative woodwork in place, painting the walls. We'll proceed all day and often into the night. Since the church is the only to pay for the laborers, many of them sacrificed part of their wages to the church of the day to be dedicated to the Lord. I want you to think about how difficult it was for these saints this time, brothers and sisters. Saints are not going to be attacked on their, uh, from the east uh, by people every day. People are trying to drive them out with guns and whips and whatever. Once who left or strewn across the state of Iowa in mud and rain and snow, and a few stayed to visit the temple, realizing their lives are at risk. This is not a normal story. 
choose what dedication is allowed to all workers is paying the first floor, the first floor, the first floor assembly hall. The next day, so that that's the real the larger repair for the service. The workers were able to put things in tension later, but they knew that they would keep the Lord of Mercy, that would not keep the Lord of Mercy, except in that temple. Comment they fulfilled the God's commands. They knew the words, the Lord has been allowed to sacrifice with the bullets on the east wall of the assembly hall. I think about the sacrifice that these people made, staying behind, being attacked by mobs, trying to drive them out to face the temple. The events going to be the remaining to work on Pesca, a monument is raised by the church which is to the right, which has lost in just 14 days because the Guru of the family and plenty of guys are graving. Once the weather settles down and the grass starts to grow, they make the rest of the trip, which is the majority of the highway, in just 14 days. Two miles remain. We're in the same weather, they're in Indian territory, with the events going to be swimming to the right mass that season. We get a plan to make it to the right mass by 1846. One of the funds in the way station, the Logos Creek Clan called for immediate infusion of funds. Confidently, confidentially, so it's not those in the same two countries so much that the time telling means for its construction. The two of the same sold at the night day in October for $200,000. We believe they're just trying to do so in order to keep our people from perishing and to keep the hostage groups from confiscating it as they had to come to table after their departure. So they say it's not the table. Turned the largest, largest building in the United States at the time. But the weeks dragged down and the possibility of table cells decreased. We were making an increasingly discouraged of what he saw as a lack of consecration on those red teams. And so, yes, those red teams, too, the strength of them immediately to the events company or returned to Nobu and rescued the poor saints. She had their own means of travel after giving all they had to require a wagon and a team with almost too much and the was available to the moment. So we're going to see the big picture and realize that the saints who weren't prepared need to get permission to the 12 and to take the permissions back time and get the or the over there. So I think the only answer to this trial may comply with it. I think in my own situation whether I would have been willing to do that to give up my wagon and go give it to the 12 or go back and get the poor people after traveling so far as I've come so far. But I think that people realize that following by following they're probably going to be blessed and they were. However, you know, sleep by the hood, always been too available, bring against Brother Lanzo, all his you go well, Willie Richards and the Vegan completely disagree with the previous plan. Sin and his crazy dark mass is the incident, primarily, primarily because of lack of provisions. The Vegan of the screen continued on after 138 days and 37 miles, took us out of the early morning, June 14th, 1846, as well as our family on dry, dusty roads. Once he got lost, Graham Young says, Good relations with the traders in Ottawa and the Yemeni Indians, going Indian agents, and even the Governor of Iowa, says he's going to see all the church members around the island, while the planting on staying temporarily on Indian lands. However, Peter Sarpy, who was a fur trader, part of the U.S. Army with, with the advancing North to answer the Mormons and defend their United with the Indians of the United States. Remember, the myth was that the Saints were going west to the United with the Indians and come back and attack the United States of America. Although these rumors are false, coupled with the awareness of the Nazarians of Hammond, opposition to the Mormons camping in the temple near the western borders, our frenzy revival of the early planet of the Pioneer North to the lands erupted. Fortuitously, all the temple following many members of our street crew to New Hammond and head for the Great Basin without their families, came the genealogy of the army of the West to right to meet the church leaders. These decisions are not to fight them, but to recruit them to the Mexico and more effort. What a blessing! We're going to have been for this, or uh, similar news since this message gives you a little back question. Previously, we're going to embrace whatever family facilities we're going to the West Coast to go on and offer. While we're going to be able to help you a little bit, Thomas Keane, well connected to Washington Insider, and the other children are starting to want to help. Just to see a little with the help of Thomas Keane, connect with the President and his hiring officers at the perfect time. The other guy that's going to work with an opportunity to receive financial assistance, staying in the loans. But the U.S. routine, as well as citizens, are recruiting them to the Army of the West. This is the first positive interaction between the churches, the and members, and any form of organization within the local state of the government in the church's history. We do not have a positive interaction with any, any form of the government, yet we finally do, and it saves the church and it saves, it's, it saves the U.S. This is between the churches between 21000 and 530000 which is between $690,000 and $1,600,000 in 2020 money, 
before wages to pay losses for the soldiers. They tell you it's the money that we need to cross the plains. They help these sort of men get across the plains as well. The lame man says it's divine providence the men who are being recruited had their concerns. Number one, they were distrustful of the government intentions. They had never had any positive interaction with the government before this time, and so they're very distrustful of the government. They were also fairly their wives and families and sweethearts to cross the plains by themselves. There's, they're also going into an unknown wilderness and uncertain destination and result. But they, they followed the problem and said that they're so good. Why did I say that with no actor, no small amount of encouragement, promises and assurances, some five hundred men agreed to go into the following conditions. Number one, the loans are bad for and protected. you got to take care of our wife and our kids. Two, they will pay us $60, which is $700 in treasury money. A month be retreated and brought back to the family to support them and their families. And three, they be led by their own leaders as much as possible, so they made the, the, the army officers Latter-day Saints. The series of pretty bad is to to both parties. The same between the laws in the U.S. received much need to supply the money for the rest of the track, which they had not. And being a prosecutor who did not have to fight the literature standards, which they do. The trust was to fill this up with the infants battle of the bulls, which was the only fighting that they did to bulls attack their family. They found an almost hurt. A feral ball directed to the right was held in honor of the left. This is a painting of the time period in China. They are dancing with, with each other before they leave for the track. Then their story march began July 21st, 1846. It was the longest infantry march in U.S. history to date. This is where they went. They went, they went south through Kansas and New Mexico and Arizona. Then I went to California where they did score gold and then they go back to Salt Lake and, and they go back to Iowa. You should notice how far they walk. So I walk all the way down to California and then all the way back. That's more than 4,000 miles, my friends. So, as we come to the end of this piece of tradition, as I like to mention, just mind that. The Saints had it tough, they had a rough go of it, but they did it, and they did it because they followed the prophet. I think the great lesson to learn here is simply this, when things aren't good, which they weren't, they weren't good for them the whole way across Iowa, it tests what kind of Saints we really are. And these Saints, they feel the body, you know, they're going an average of one and a half of a mile a day in the mud. They say they feel the prophet, and they do as well. This is also a great example of people who willing to give their all to the, to the Lord. I think about my situation. I wonder if I would give everything to the Lord at this time like they did, like they did then. I, I don't have people chasing me with guns like they did in Abu and I, I'm not way to the mud like they were in Iowa. But I'm still being asked to follow the Prophet in simple, clear ways. We have to remember that Nelson to follow him in, in very clear ways with home church, etc. Although the things change, the principles are the same. The principles are this, follow the prophet wherever he leads you, and stay to the church no matter what happens to you. It's my hope my friends, that we can, be, we can gain some hope and some courage and some, some faith from these saints and saying their stories. We see how faithful they were to follow the prophet and do what it took to keep the church alive. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I can't tell him this. <laughs> oh, she wouldn't have lost. I can't find it. I can't find it. There it is. Uh.